Good morning, welcome to worship. Today we're starting with a new format of our video services. We've decided to streamline it a bit, making it shorter, uh, simply because uh, we'd like to, to reach a wider audience out there. And people don't always have 45 minutes to, to sit down and watch a video on YouTube. So we're going to try and, and put it in a shorter time frame. Uh, also, uh, today I'm going to address something you th may have heard a lot about, a lot of sermons, but there's always something new when we talk about God's grace, God's amazing grace. And it's not just about God's grace flowing over us and making life beautiful to us, even when, when times get troublesome, but the challenge, the real challenge to now go and reciprocate. Become that grace to others, to a neighbor, a friend, a stranger. And there lies the real challenge for us to be part and actually to become God's amazing grace. So let us sing that, that first hymn that we know and love so well. Sing along. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Come, let us pray. Touch me, O Lord, with your light and your hope. 
Please give me strength when, when I feel weak, love when I feel forsaken, courage when I'm afraid, wisdom when I feel foolish, comfort when I'm alone, hope when I feel rejected, and peace if I am in turmoil. But Father, let your amazing grace hang like a cloak, a wonderful cloak, a garment of glory around my shoulders today. Not just to feel the, the warmth and the intensity of your love, but also to become that love, to become that grace, to be truly amazing and being graceful to, to others, the ones I know and love, the ones I sometimes find difficult to get along with, the ones I don't know at all, the perfect stranger. Help me to become that amazing grace. As we kneel at your feet, Father, in the prayer that your Son taught us so lovingly, and so we join. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, beginning at verse 25. The Parable of the Good Samaritan On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbour as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus said. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbour? In reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road and when he saw the man, he passed on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he travelled, came where the man was and when he saw him, he took pity on him he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey and brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will re reimburse you for any extra expense you have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbour to the man who fell into the hands of Robert, robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Amen. The second reading is from the Old Testament, book of Isaiah, chapter 43, beginning at verse 1. Israel's only saviour. But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep you over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. I give Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Seba in your stead. Since you are precious and honoured in my sight, and because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. 
I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. Amen. Someone who meant very, very well said to me the other day, you know, Willem, we, we appreciate how you preach about love every Sunday, but I happened to listen to a video service from a very old traditional church and the minister was fierce and strong. We, we went back into the Old Testament and he was quite tough on us. Sometimes we, we need a minister to be really tough on us. Maybe you should try that. And I thought, thank you, I know you mean well, but I am trying to do that. Speaking about loving other people is probably the toughest challenge I can present to my congregation. Um, we can have ritual cleansing, we can have all kinds of laws and traditions, but to love, especially those that are not kind or nice to you, is, I think, toughest thing on earth. To love someone that doesn't love you is, is tough in itself, but to love somebody that, that hates you, that has been mean and awful to you, that I think is the toughest, toughest challenge. Can it get any tougher? So Jesus laid this challenge to us and we see it so well in, in the parable he told of the Good Samaritan. Now, you've probably heard a million sermons about it, but let me quickly dip into the background. There was a lot of hate between Jews and Samaritans, and it went both ways. The Jews felt that the Samaritans were not 
pure Jews anymore because they intermarried with people from Palestine and the Jewish law forbade Jews to marry outside their race. In a way the Samaritans remind me very much of the so-called coloreds in South Africa. Now I don't think of people as white and black or coloreds, we are all God's children, but there is a group called the coloreds and I've always been so fond of them. In the days of apartheid they were not white enough so they were excluded. And then after the, the freedom and, and uh, the new constitution, the new South Africa, sometimes the coloreds weren't are still regarded as not black enough so they still kept out of positions and 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 um, the things that they truly really deserve. The Samaritans were the so-called coloreds of the Old Testament. The Jews were forbidden to have anything to do with them. They were not even allowed to speak to them. Now this kind of animosity of course has a backlash so the Samaritans were very skeptic of the Jews. Fact is, there was a clear device, a wall so strong between them. Remember when Jesus met the Samaritan woman at the well, she reminded him that he's not even allowed to speak to her. But here, in the parable of Jesus, he uses a Samaritan as the good guy. A man was lying almost dead, well left for dead at the side of the road. People just walked by, um, all kinds of people, the Jewish priest and um, the Pharisee, um, the so-called holy ones just walked past him. He, he was a Jew. But then the stranger comes along, the, the Samaritan, the hated one, the one that um, was shunned almost like a leper, and he helps the Jew. He helps him up, he nurses him, he takes him to an inn. He um, gets medical help, he pays for his stay in the inn, he does everything that a true brother or a father or uh, the best friend would have done. And Jesus then says, the question is not thinking, who is my neighbor? I can't choose my neighbor because God made that choice. We are closer than neighbors. The question is, who was a neighbor? to that wounded man, who acted like a neighbor. And in the way the Samaritan acts, we see almost an imitation of God, Jesus trying to tell us what God would have done had he been in that man's shoes. And that is the real challenge of Christianity, the tough part, to do as God would have done. To let the living breath, the living spirit of God live inside us and then become that grace. For this is the story about grace. But here the Samaritan becomes grace. And this is the challenge for me and you today. We have to become that grace. How do we do it? It's tough. It's tough to love and to reach out to people who, who shun you, who are horrible to you. How can we do it? And the answer lies in our Old Testament reading from Isaiah. God says to us, I am with you. Do not be afraid. I have called you by your name. If you go through a river, a deep river, the waters won't flow over you. I'll help you to get through. If you have to go through flames, you will not be burned. Do not be afraid. I am with you. And so God is saying the same to us. Go out, be brave, love, be graceful, even to those who are horrible to you, because I'm with you. How? I live inside you. My spirit is within you. Even when you were a baby, I started living inside you, but sometimes you closed that door on me. God will give us the strength to be the Good Samaritan, to, to be amazingly graceful, but we have to be close to God. Jesus called God Abba, which is not formally Father, but Daddy. It's, it's a close form. 
But that kind of intimacy always came in the messages of Jesus. I'm in the Father, the Father is in me. I am in you and you are in me. The word Abba belongs to a family of intimate words. The same root we find in Abab, which is the word used for friend or brother, somebody really close to you. In, in Middle Eastern languages, even in the ancient Egyptian, Ab means heart, somebody close to your heart. And that kind of intimacy is what Jesus brought to us. And that empowers us and enables us to be kind to others. We've got to be intimately close to our Creator and allow Him inside us. And then we will, like Jesus, become peace to the world, become a friend to others, become a neighbor, and become amazing grace. Just allow God to truly live inside you, inside your heart, and then flowing through your actions and the way we treat other people. Yes, you and I can become amazing grace because God said, I'm with you. I live inside you. I've called you by your name. If you go through the waters, they will not flow over you. If you walk through fire, you will not burn. If you have to love those who hate you, I will give you that love. I will become your love and your amazing grace. Amen.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord turn his face toward you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.